am here joined by Senator Judd Gregg of New Hampshire. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. We Thank you, Peter. We've been listening a little bit, seeing uh, Senator Dodd talking about his regulatory reform plan. Yeah. A lot of Democrats up there on stage with him. Any Republicans prepared to back Senator Dodd? Again, you're just receiving this legislation yeah, today. Well, it's a little early. We've just seen it. Uh, so we're going to have to take a hard look at it. This is not, however, a partisan fight. This is an issue of getting it right. There are, there's one issue which we have strong philosophical differences on, which is the consumer protection issue. We think consumer protection should stay with the regulatory agencies. They want to separate out a separate agency. But, but on these other issues, it's just a question of getting it right. Uh, we want to make sure our financial system is sound, and we also want to make sure it's competitive, and we want to make sure that when capital is being formed in this world, uh, America is the first choice for the place to form it. Let me ask you about perhaps the change that is uh, the biggest change in Senator Dodd's bill with what's been working through the House. That's this idea of a single banking regulator instead of the four agencies we have right now. What do you make of that? Is that a component of this plan that you could support? Well, you know, it's one of those ideas that's been thrown out there, and it has some attraction and it has some negatives. You know, the, the biggest negative, of course, is that as you move authority out of the Fed, and the Fed still retains the authority for doing monetary policy, how do they do good monetary policy if they don't know what these fairly large institutions are doing that have worldwide impact? So that's one of the biggest issues. And of course, you have the FDIC already doing a, a pretty darn good job of managing banks as they run into trouble. So we've got to weigh the different pluses and minuses. It would be good to streamline things because obviously having four or five different uh, examiners coming into a bank is not constructive to an efficient way to run it. So let's look at it, see which one works the best, see if we can't work out at something that does work well. It sounds like the Fed takes a pretty decent hit in uh, Senator Dodd's bill. Is that appropriate? Well, the Fed is the target on it right now, but the House bill didn't do that. The House bill sort of followed what the administration was proposing. I happen to think the Fed's done a very good job. Now, whether they can take on more authority is a, is a very serious issue, but what they do, I think they've done reasonably well, uh, and especially when it comes to bank uh, management and the holding company area. All right, last question on this topic. In this legislation, this new Systemic Risk Council will have the ability to break up large financial institutions if necessary. Is that appropriate? Is it time for Congress to mandate that some of these firms just get smaller? Well, I think that's really dangerous. Uh, big is not necessarily bad. Uh, if an entity is property capital, properly capitalized and if it does decent underwriting, uh, big can work to the advantage of this country. You know, we're competing in a worldwide global market. Uh, and to have that sort of implication out there that there's a group of regulators who may approach things and other than a business-like approach, uh, may have political agendas, uh, deciding how large a company can get in this country, Boy, I think it might be uh, undermining the ability of us to attract capital and especially for, of entities which uh, we need in order to be competitive in the world to be able to grow and be robust. Uh, you've been tackling another tough issue today here on the Hill in the Budget Committee. You're the ranking member there. The budget deficit, $1.4 trillion in the last fiscal year. Do you get any sense that there's any bipartisan support for trying to confront this issue sooner rather than later? Well, there is bipartisan support for ideas along the lines of what Senator Conrad and I have proposed, which is to set up a, a fast track task force, which is made up of members who understand the issue and members of the administration, give them a portfolio that says everything's on the table, and then get some tough decisions made. If we don't do this, it's very obvious where we're going. We're going to a second class status as a nation because our debt is getting so large we won't be able to sustain it. Our kids will end up with a lower quality of life. And, and we simply have to do something on the debt and deficit side of this agenda. And to be clear to our viewers, this is simply legislation that would set up a process. It doesn't actually spell out cuts. This commission would have to come up with these tough decisions? That's correct. The commission would make a presentation to the Congress, which would then be voted on on fast track, uh, up and down vote, no amendments. And so it would be a commission with real authority and which would have the ability to force the Congress to take some action uh, on these very difficult issues which politically the Congress has shown it can't do in regular order. There is a, a vote coming up or consideration we expect in the Senate soon. The debt ceiling is going to be hit again. Some talk of adding this proposal to legislation that would uh, that would extend the debt ceiling. First of all, do you support that? Is that likely? Well, on our side of the aisle, we don't think that you should be raising the debt ceiling unless you do something about the debt. <laughs> I mean, that seems fairly logical, especially when we know we're going to have to raise the debt ceiling in another six to eight months because the debt is just piling up on us. So our side of the aisle feels that three or four things should be done. One, we should uh, rescind stimulus spending that's outside the budgetary, that's outside the recessionary window. Uh, we should put a freeze of some sort on discretionary spending. We should make sure all the TARP money goes to debt reduction, and we should pass something that addresses entitlements along the line of the Conrad Gregg bill. All right, we've got to leave it there. Senator Judd Gregg, as always, appreciate you joining us here on Bloomberg.